Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop this afternoon. I was just cleaning things up, getting ready, in fact, for my next project, and I was going to throw these three switches away. And I thought, wait a minute, before I throw them away, why don't we just take them apart, look inside, and see if we can figure out what has happened to each one of them. They're all misbehaving, so including the original one here. So why don't we start with the original one? Take a little closer look at it. Okay, so the corner is broken out of it. Uh, not that, yeah, and the uh, contact is gone. So I mean, this, so that this switch is is uh, totally shot. sweet spot for the focus. Let's just get it up a little a little bit closer here. This thing just knocks back and forth <coughs> based on that spring, which gets compressed when you push this towards the middle. <laughs> Tricky. So that part's working just fine. But what happened was, the uh, on this switch, the contact here got knocked off. It's missing. So, unrepairable. Well. Now what? I don't think I kept the uh, part at this point. Or yeah, you know what? It's probably in a bag. Now, considering this mechanical part works fine, this might actually be repairable. Now, now I say that. <laughs> but you know, even if this were repaired, uh, it it's cracked once. It's, it's probably going to crack again. Uh, what is that? Bakelite? This again is going to be some kind of a wood rot resin combination material. That's my guess. And you just shove it in a mold and get it to have this kind of shape. Sort of like the poor guy's plastic. Anyway, enough of that switch. About these guys. The same very simple construction. I don't mind bothering taking these off, but I am. probably find it's exactly the same construction. That's probably what we're going to find. So it's got a pretty solid looking rivet here. Yeah. It's not the easiest thing to get out. Maybe we'll punch it out. That's easy. You could just bend that back and just pry this apart. And who cares if it breaks? It doesn't really matter. We want to look and see why why the uh, electrical contact was poor. So would it matter if I no, you know, it wouldn't really matter if I smash this thing all apart. Uh, and I got another one anyway, and I don't know which one's this. So this this is the one that was hooked up. This was the 
the other the other one that, one, that was going to be its replacement. It turned out to be. Yeah, I did think about spraying stuff inside these and, and that, but you know, it's a switch right on the power the power line. And, and, you know, it has the potential to get an arcing type fault going inside it. It wouldn't take long for this thing to heat up, so that rivet is still pulling this really tight. I think I can just whack that right out of there. One good whack. One bad whack. Bad whack is what's in order here. Okay, so this will be loud on the recording. <laughs> I, just, I just don't think this is going to work. Let's give it a go. Ready? Did work. Oh, so now this is separated a little differently than the other one. So now you can see the actual part that rocks at the top there. Let me hold this. I don't think I've ever actually looked inside one of these before. Not to this degree. See the black gunk? You know what? You know what? Look at look at the uh, light coming through up there. You can see my fingers and everything. Now you could just spray WD-40 right down there. And it would go right into the business, business end of this thing pretty well. I say, or did they oil this? Ugh. What's all that? Um. And somebody else has sprayed WD forty in this. I, I, I can't imagine that. Okay, pull this cover off. It's just a, a horrid mess. Look, you could, you could spray it in past the wires here too, if you wanted to. I'm, I'm not up on spraying WD-40 into power switches. It's just maybe an ordinary, like a proper uh, contract contact cleaner that doesn't leave behind oil. Ugh. the contacts way down on the bottom there. It's get a little more light on this. You can see them down on the bottom. And this spring loaded metal plate is slamming down on it. Wait a minute, no it's not. What is it that's actually hitting those it's this little this little copper piece here. <laughs> So this is so this is the contact. So here is the part we gotta look at. So what's it actually doing in there? How does this make contact? Flipped it over. Don't get confused.
put it together here and see I don't, don't quite see how this makes contact snap that all the way down. Right down. Whoa! <laughs> I had to duck that. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's gone on the floor now, but I think the idea is this gets all the way down, and then that copper part is a spring-loaded push against those two, those two pieces down there, the vertical part. Okay, I think I understand how an on-off switch works. <laughs> What all this goop is, I just don't know. I don't know. Is that normal? Or is that somebody else's WD-40? Why would somebody spray WD-40 in these? Hurt. Oop, sorry about that. Bit of an eye ear breaker. Really. I can just feel that screwdriver slipping into my finger. There we go. Something like that. Or like that. I'm hiding my fingers. Okay. I'm going to do that. One time rivet. Blaster. Hit it pretty hard last time. I don't need to hit it quite so hard. Prepare for a loud sound. Oh, a little harder. Okay, now we know what we're seeing right from the start. I don't see how that, how's that go down? How's that go any lower than it is, really? Okay, everything's coming apart here. Oh, okay, now I see how it actually works. Okay, so this is not a pivot. These are rollers. These are rollers down here. And they roll right up and get into contact. And the spring, the spring uh, is, uh, you know, when the spring lever is angled over here, there's a, a moment this way. And away she goes. Zoom to the other side. Whack. And then when you work the switch, just at the last minute, you know, just you could just see the the that little ball. You could pretend this thing's that little ball. Wow, we're really understanding a switch here. <laughs> so the little finger that goes in the top of the spring cap okay it's 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 coming down so it's compressing 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 now it's quite compressed it gets over to here just as it crosses the uh, st straight up vertical above the barbell roller as soon as it gets just the slightest bit further there's a moment pushing the barbell this way and away she goes and the spring releases and the switch settles in your finger. You feel it in your finger. Wow, okay. So there's actually a, a rolling contact. I just, you know, if somebody had told me that, it's no way. It's, I've never seen a rolling contact in there. There it is. So 
if we look in there, uh, you know, so what's all this goop? So, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the goop is, but uh, basically, my, my, my goop knowledge isn't all that great. But one possibility is uh, this this is a material that's come out of this. It's actually oozed out of it. That's not very likely, is it? Because it would ooze out over the outside of here, too, wouldn't it? be oozing out, it'd be oozing everywhere. I, why would they know that? You know, when they create these materials, they know that. Next possibility is that there's an original lubricant put in here, and uh, the reason it's brown and dirty and and uh, apparently a problem now is because it has chemically reacted probably with oxygen in the air over the long run. It's basically cooked at room temperature you know, if 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 you saw it in a recipe, it would say uh, cook at room temperature 25 years. I think that's really about it for the story on these. So what if I hose that out with? If I had, if I if I hosed that out, say I just loaded the WD-40 down there, just load it in, and then turn turn the switch uh, turn the switch upside down. Shake as much of it out as you can. Load it back in. Or, you know what I would actually want to try? It would be alcohol. You know what? We, we can try this. We can throw some... We can, we can do a little experiment here. What dissolves the gunk? I, I do have some of that gunk. Gunk? Gunk? Engine gunk cleaner? But that's not what I want to use. Alcohol. Alcohol. So it's just the object here is not to clean it, it's just to find out if alcohol will dissolve this stuff. Yeah, let's go we'll go back on the close up. Instantaneously. So I'm just fooling around now to see what uh, what might have occurred had we tried this. I mean, I mean, I don't even take it apart and stick it. Q-tip in it. Well, you know what? You you could kind of do this, especially if you had. Well, yeah, especially if you had uh, a lot of time on your hands. So, don't know what that stuff is. Did it really clean up off the edges? Doesn't look like it, does it? You gotta take the clean end. pretty clean now. Well, you know, maybe it could have. Plus it's right on these edges here. It's on the edge of this piece. Surely to goodness if I'd looked really cl closely. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe the gasket was... No, no. You see, it's leaked under the gasket everywhere. Unless when I lifted things apart, all that stuff shot into those places. I can't believe that. So that means it could have looked on the edge, just like we're doing now, when the whole thing was together, or even wiped it with something, and then looked. I got a ha-ha. I would have had a ha-ha. And then, I could have taken the... I'd say, okay, I know what's going on. It's the gunk problem. Well, then I could have drenched this with, with alcohol. 
because the top here is so open. Really, just load it in there, shake it around. It's all a little bit too late for these guys, but you know that this is what happens in a postmortem. Things don't go well for the person being postmortemed. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Bits and pieces. But uh, I learned some interesting stuff there, actually. Hope you did too. Thanks for watching.